Hi, I'm Mark Harling with Bean Trailer. I'm here with Drew Hansen. Uh, you guys would know him on YouTube as Playing With Sticks. Uh, he was kind enough for the last two months to take out uh, our Beanstalk trailer uh, being towed by a Subaru Outback Wilderness. You've seen and experienced and camped with and towed a lot more different trailers than I have, right? Mm -hmm. So I know how we perceive ourselves in the marketplace, and I'm really curious uh, how how that lines up with how you perceive us in the line. Yeah, yeah, in, okay. In the marketplace, so I just created a bunch of categories, and um, I want you to rate bean stock. Um, can I can I give why I rate the ratings? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So rate bean stock, and just I'm gonna. I'm probably not going to define the category too much, okay. but and leave it kind of open-ended. But um, I want you to rate it, and then I'm going to rate it as um, somebody who obviously has a strong bias toward being trailer, okay. but also is an observer of the marketplace. And and I will, and I have a strong bias too, because this honestly is the trailer we picked. Yeah. I mean, when we looked at the market, when we saw what's out there and fit our family best, that's this. So I always yeah. feel a little bad on our YouTube channel because my review is a bit biased because this is the trailer for me. Uh, like, I notice honest. when I talk wow. bad about anybody's trailer on YouTube, the people who own that trailer just come out after me, you know, right. because that's their baby. Right. Uh, and so I, I do have a little bias, too, because, yeah. you know, okay. spec-wise, this, this fits us best. All right. Fair enough. Okay. You ready to do this? Mm-hmm. All right, let me give you one of these. Don't oh, show I, me your answer. Oh, I'm writing it, okay. And you're, gotcha. you're, gonna, you're gonna write a number. Uh, a one would be the best, okay. and you know, okay. two would be second best, and so on and so forth. All right, so are you ready for this? Yep. Um, cabin comfort and layout. Cabin comfort and layout. You're, kind of, you're starting off, but you knew you were gonna win this one. Yeah, this is an easy one. <laughs> this is you, this is like this is like, yeah, like yeah, pitching slow you pitch here. slow pitch softball. Yeah, and that makes I mean, <laughs> yeah. every trailer out there, they're either going big to being standing room yeah, only, or they're right. going traditional. And you found the happy medium. You yep. went that one extra foot of headroom. Yeah. If I was to say, how does being stand out above head and shoulders above the rest? It's cabin comfort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah May would agree with you on that. Yeah. Uh, and for me, here's my 1.2. I like wood. I'm yeah. a little bit of a wood guy. Right. And so I would like your new black bean. I like the wood accents in there. Okay. Uh, and so that'd be the only thing for me. Like if there was some bit of a wood element in there, I'd be like, I'd be home. Should I just put a just a piece of wood, just a Varnish piece of teak. Chunk of wood. Just set a piece of teak in there for me. <laughs> okay, teak, teak accent. <laughs> okay, uh, galley function and layout. Galley function. So this is why I really initially was attracted to the trailer. So, galley function and layout. You've seen a, you've seen a lot of trailers. I have. So I'm trying to think about. I've seen some neat ones. I'm gonna have to go one on this, and it's. <laughs> did you do one on yours? I did one. So for this one, for me, it's because of height. You're at the yeah. exact perfect height for cooking for me. Maybe a tiny bit too high for May. Yeah. But May's only five foot tall. Right. Uh, for you know. Yeah, but some of those trailers have like, on me the counter yeah. is at my chest, it, and I'm like this terrible ergonomics. Exactly. It's not built for humans. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. And then the fact that there's no water back there. Because um, yeah. I don't like to winterize. If this did have yeah. wood in it, I don't want my wood to get damaged if there was yeah. wood trim, which this doesn't have, which right. is nice. And then the pass-through again. The same yeah. food that I'm using for cooking could later be food to pull in for a snack. So, yeah, it's a good layout. Ease of towing. Ease of towing. This is where you know you're going to... Thank you. I'm glad you given me one where you're going to you're gonna fall a bit behind. Uh, really? Okay. Ease of towing. In terms of, what are you thinking? Ease of towing. Okay, let me. However you define, this. however you define that. 
are we comparing it with teardrops? Because it already yeah. loses points compared to a larger trailer because you have it's shorter, so it's a little squirrelier, oh, right? Yeah, I get a little you. squirrelier in terms of than like, like a sixteen foot. Especially backing foot. it up, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, and then towing. I'm gonna have to do a couple numbers on this. We're gonna we're gonna split this down. So yeah, I would say it is three for terms of just good feeling ride. Like this trailer's okay. balanced. Um, it's oh, got. Oh, but that means there's two that are more it's balanced. Got a, or, no, it's the components. No. Oh, okay. Right. So if I jumped up into a meaner bean yeah. or the black bean, I wouldn't right. have these issues. Right. So right. bean stock. Okay, I got With you. an axle running all the way across. I I don't have as much give, so it's a bit stiffer ride. Yeah. Even though I said it was a smooth ride, compared yeah. to timber and suspension, right. it's a bit right. stiffer. Yeah. Um, in terms of balance uh, for, for towing, because of its size, I'd say a little heavy on the tongue compared to other trailers I've used. Okay. Um, and then... That's really it. I, I guess those are the ones. That's what would put it into three for me. Okay. There's some other right. trailers. The way they've balanced it for tongue weight and the support or the suspension they put has made it a softer ride. Okay. All right. So mine would be question mark because because I I haven't towed those other trailers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, Nick, let's make sure we edit that portion out of this. I know, video. right? <laughs> Okay, here's, I'm really curious about this one. And I'm not going to define this for you. Okay. Craftsmanship. Craftsmanship. Yeah, so this is a, this is a tie. I can say this like one-to-one -one right here. We're talking two totally different beasts. You put two. Look at you. Are you going to say, wait, 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 wait. wait. Are you going to say I, vestibule? I, what are you going to say? I wasn't going to say, I, I was thinking vestibule, okay. but I wasn't going to say anything because I, I, I think other people would have guessed somebody else That's and good. they would have been wrong about that. Yeah. So yeah, I would say, so they're two totally different trailers, right? You have your right. vestibule, which is like a boat. Yeah. Uh, I was in right. one, there was, right. a, there was a family yeah. the other day at Keyhole State Park in um, Wyoming. Yeah. I jumped in there and like, just the, the eye for detail, it's like yeah. you guys, the attention to detail, yeah. the pass through where the windows are laid out, like that person who designed the vestibule actually sat in that thing for hundreds of hours. Some right. guy sat on his back and just looked around yeah. and was like, where should things yeah. be? And that's the same thing I get with this, but yours is a different, yours is. Yeah, I think of that vestibule of like beautiful old fashioned craftsmanship, yep. right? Yep. That's why I purposely use the word craftsmanship. Yep, right? exactly. Yeah. So. And, and this is that just to a modern way. So you're using right. light yeah. tones and grays and composites and softs. Like you have textures yeah. in here. Right. You have smooth and rounded and you have right. like. Right. So yeah, one to one on that one. Okay, so you're going to think this was the same category, but I see this as a completely different category. Okay. Fit and finish. Fit and finish. Uh, so I haven't been in enough manufacturing facilities to, to honestly review this, but my assumption is by far number one. I mean, the quality control in here is insane. Yeah. I mean, the guys you have out here with their white glove right. doing all these little things. Like, there was a guy here a couple months ago when I came in. He found, like, when, the, when they had powder-coated it or when they had, I don't know what they did. He found, yeah. like, a speck of dust. And he started the whole process over because there had been a speck of dust. Yeah. Um, and just how you guys have the tickets, yeah. like, on all of these, where people can see where it was left off. So when right. they hand it over, they're picking up, like... Yeah, when you walk in this trailer, you're not going to find, like I do in all the other trailers, scratches, gaps in the trim. Right. Um, we take great showing. pride you in that. Great putty, pride in not glue. having that. You're right. not seeing any of that stuff showing up. There's no trim on this. You right. know, most companies hide their imperfections with trim. Right. You have very little trim on here. Right. I think I saw trim in like two places. Right. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, we're very proud of that. Thank you. We're very proud of the quality and fit and finish of our trailers. Yeah. And that's the one thing when people haven't seen a bean trailer in real life, you know, you can't tell fit and finish from photos no. and the no. and the internet, right? right? Right. That's the one thing where people walk in and go, oh, okay, like there's a level of refinement that you don't see every day, yeah. right? In the yeah. trailer. And I, I take a lot of pride in that. Okay, structural rigidity. Structural rigidity. Yeah, think about <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, like on those yeah, BLM and forest roads and yeah, and just yeah, yeah. So I would say, based on everybody I've seen, you're you're not better than, but you're on par with the whole off-road industry. Okay. Um, and so for me, that was like yeah. for this beanstalk, it's almost overbuilt. Yeah. It's almost too much, but that's great because then you can add all this components. Right. Yeah. Aesthetic. Aesthetic. Ooh. So it, it's definitely a people pleaser. You know, down yeah. on the street, everybody, it's turning heads all the time. Everybody's coming and talking about it. The inside is beautiful. These lines that you yeah. can only see in person, like how you put these, they're not, so I think a lot of people think these are end caps. Right. And they're not. Like that's right. part of the one piece molded fiberglass. And you've made this like beautiful kind of, I don't know if you call it arcing, and it kind Prope of. Propeller. Propeller, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's uh, in terms of just smooth lines. I mean, this is this is a one because this isn't. It's a different types of craftsmanship yeah. again. This is like yeah. perfecting a mold, perfecting yeah, a design. I, I, I think if you accept that uh, teardrop trailers can can evolve from their original concept of wood and aluminum skin, then this is definitely an aesthetic revolu evolution. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, durability. Oh. By far, this is what I can say, hands down, without a doubt. There's, Ro railroad tracks? That's a lot of ones. <laughs> there, is no, there is no trailer out there with this fiberglass. Yeah. You know, you, we can talk about the durability of your frame and that composite wall and all that other stuff that you have that puts you yeah. up with the off-road, but nobody has this. Yeah. And this is what's going to keep it durable over time. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and it's cool, the video we have coming out tomorrow, it's neat. I, I talk about why people don't take care of their scamps, casitas and stuff, because they don't have to. Yeah. They you know, just like, let it go. You know, when, when I take bean camping, I like I always have great intentions. I'm gonna like I'm gonna wash it, I'm gonna dry it, and I'm gonna wax it, right? Mm -hmm. But I basically just power wash yeah, it. You just, yeah. Because it looks good after I'm done. Yep. It doesn't really need anything more than no. that. No, and like I'm, I said, because there's no trim there's no edges. Right. Nothing's gonna catch. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're almost at the end here. Okay. Value. Value. That's a big one. Um, and I'm going to let you define. I mean, yeah. I, I, I'm super tempted to, to define that for you. Yeah. But I'm going to resist the temptation so of doing I'm it. So I'm going to say, just like I say in tomorrow's video, if we're talking the value of what these components are that are in it, build quality and price, these trailers, let's don't even count fiberglass. The meaner bean and mean bean are on par with the industry. Right. This is a trailer on its own. Nobody's making a trailer like this because you've taken off-road components and put it in a non-off-road teardrop. Like this is a right. soft road right. teardrop. Yeah. Um, so to Which me, happens to be a beast off-road. Yeah, beast. Yeah. I would call this, before you invented this, I yeah. would have called this a off-road teardrop, yeah. right? Yeah. But the industry today calls these yeah. over. Well, oh, the industry over. is in love with, you know, and that's a different subject, right? 20 inches of ground yeah. clearance and, like, what do you need 20 inches of ground clearance for? Yeah. And, uh, and massive tires, right? Yeah. Like, the yeah. industry's in love with that. Yeah, and so, yeah, what my video states is that you can go out there today, you're not going to find a trailer with 15 inches of clearance with a Dorsian, Dorsian, 
torsion the, axle. Tor <laughs> Dexter torsion <laughs> axle. Um, with with the composite sidewall that allows you to put on all these accessories and all this right. at that price. Yeah. Like you actually, I agree. like to me, I'm like, how are they doing this? Like how's Bean selling this trailer at this price? And I hope you guys keep it around this price for a while because yeah. it's, it's a magic yeah. entry level trailer for people like me who want to do it all but yeah. don't want to pay more than my tow vehicle. Right, yep, yep, I agree. So for me, it's a clear one. I, I know I'm biased again yep. on that, but I, I think for the construction, Beanstalk is an incredible value. Yeah, right? and then you can't put a value on the fiberglass. You can't right. even add that. If nobody in the market has it, yeah. besides a $40,000 trailer right. right now that's out there, yeah. Well, think, think about how, you know, with the exception of Scamp, right, but even Scamp is built different than mm -hmm. this, right? Um, think about fiberglass trailers. They're just way more money. Yeah. Way more money. Well, yeah, you're buying yeah. a peace of mind, basically. You're buying into a bit of a cult. It's a cult following, the fiberglass yeah. trailers, but it is yeah. for a reason. These people right. will not buy anything else because they don't yeah. want their stuff. They don't want RV industry yeah. junk falling apart on the road. So you were on a two-month adventure. Two-month adventure. A little jealous that uh, you have been able to sort your life in such a way that you're able to do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is awesome. We're calling it our gap summer. Yeah. It's our cool. gap summer. Yeah. So uh, tell, tell me about, um, this is purposely an open-ended question, tell me about your adventure. Okay. Okay. Tell you about the adventure. Uh, Let's tell you why I'm on the adventure first. Okay. Um, because we moved, sold everything in Alaska and heading to Thailand in a week and a half, uh, I needed a trailer. Yeah. Um, and I was hoping to get the trailer that our families had our eye on for the past couple of years. Um, and so that's why we reached out to you. That's why we, we wanted to try out the Beanstalk. And we were happy that you said, yeah, take it out. Yeah. Um, and so we thought, what better way to kind of solidify an opinion about a trailer than to actually like live in it full time for two months. Like by the time we're done with this, I will be able to honestly tell the community if it lived up to my expectation or it was like, eh, you know. Yeah. Yep. Um, and so, as you, I mean, right. this is it coming back from two months. Yeah. So it looks great, by the it's way. It's in one piece, right? Yeah. No, it's not just in one piece. <laughs> it looks great. It looks like it belongs in the showroom. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to detail it, but I thought, you know, you have your details yeah. here. But, yeah. yeah, so we took it out. And um, the biggest thing for me was I needed something that May was going to be comfortable in. And I was a little nervous that this trailer wouldn't be it for two mm. months. Like, yeah. who can live in a teardrop with a family of four full time? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I could see why you would have that thought. <laughs> and, I, and I got a little worried because May said she was like, she was excited about it. But then I'm like, is she really? Does she know what she's getting yeah. herself into? So we got out and right off the bat, like that extra foot of headroom. Like, it was, so May describes it as her Japanese micro hotel. Like, it felt yeah. like home to us. She actually was at the point where she didn't want to leave a campground. Mm -hmm. She said, well, why do we have to go anywhere? Like, why can't we just stay here for two weeks? And I was like, but... <laughs> <laughs> don't you want to know what this thing could, don't you want to see more you know yeah. and I think that was she's our, like no no she really didn't like she could have just so I said next uh, summer what do you want to do when we come back around she says just stay put I was like in a little teardrop or do you want to do like a vintage trailer again or whatever she's like oh yeah this would be fine just uh, don't nice. take just don't take me everywhere let's stay in a place that's for a, a huge weeks. compliment man thank you you know I know yeah. that's pretty cool yeah. So and for me, you know, it's an inside. Like I loved right. it. It was comfortable, but I'm not an inside guy. Yeah. Um, so right. so for me, I was more focused on this trailer this summer about what does that galley do? Yeah. What does that 15 inches of clearance actually mean? Right. And then obviously, is this the one piece fiberglass construction that I expect it to be? Right. You know. And so I think the big thing I noticed right off the bat, we went up to Wasatch area, um, right on the border of. Wyoming and Utah here yeah and I started pushing this right off the bat um, when we went back up there the second time because the first time I kind of went wimpy right uh, 
I took the Escapod trailer out there right. the first time and kind of got a feel for the land. Right. Come back, yeah. pick this up. And I was like, this is what a trailer can do. Because at home, yeah. I have independent suspension. I have 12 inches of clearance, which is pretty good for yeah. Alaska. It gets me almost anywhere. But there's a bit of reservation all the time in the back of my head because I've gotten close. I can feel it. This never the entire summer. Yeah. Uh, one time because of the the angle, right? I, I caught the right. the tongue. Yep. But I've I done never, I've done that. Never even times. remotely got near any of this, you know. Right. And so what it kind of caused me to do this summer is I just wanted to see what's around the next corner. And nice. I actually oh, being there, <laughs> right? It's like being there, like to. When, I, when we came up with being there, I'm like, have the confidence to go. Like, just go. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it, and it made me realize I am not a mean or meaner being guy. Like, yeah. this just solidified it for me because there was a couple points this summer where I took my family down some trails and I went too far. And my stomach like turned. I got sick. Like I got yeah. a little nauseated going, I just put my family at risk. I can't, there's no way I'm gonna get back up this hill. I'm in a weird spot. Yeah. Uh, and it kind of made me think like, yeah, like these trailers are for people with the truck and the winch and the Jeep club yep. and a buddy to help them out. Yeah. Here's me all by myself with my little family. And so I think like 15 inches is great because it could get me anywhere, but it gives me a little bit of restriction. It like. Right. It yeah. holds me back just enough so I don't do I something like, like stupid, yeah. if that makes any like sense. It's a, it's, a, it's a governor? Yeah, a governor. That's yeah. exactly right. It's yeah. exactly it. But at the same time, I think it was more in my mind. I honestly think if I would hook this to a truck at 15 inches, I would have got it over anything. Yeah. There was nothing this summer that I wouldn't have been able to Cindy pass. Cindy and I have taken Beanstalk in our Tacoma and in the Wrangler over crazy stuff. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've seen you guys. I mean, you guys. Right. So in our videos, you guys are going to see, I'm following this with a drone, and it's rough. But right. in the drone video, it doesn't even look like it's moving. Yeah. <laughs> and in your guys' drone video, your stuff is all over the place. Right. So, I mean, you've I mean, you've pushed this. Yeah. Yes. And that gave me confidence yes, <laughs> this summer. So I was like, you know, yeah. Mark gave me this. You didn't even tell me I needed to make a video. Your only stipulation right. was, if this is the trailer you use all summer, you don't have to talk about it. You don't have to do a walkthrough. Just take it out. And I said, okay. And then I kept waiting for you to say, like, baby, my trailer. And you never said anything. Nope. So I thought... I took that as permission yeah. to enjoy this thing, and so I did. And I mean, as you can tell, uh, it's definitely in one piece. And people will see in the videos, we went to a lot of really fun places uh, this nice. summer. Nice. Um, I'm trying to think of the main thing, though, for me of this this summer was the galley. Yeah. To me, besides the fiberglass, which I'll talk about in a bit, galley is what sets a teardrop apart from everyone else. I got into this originally Agreed. because of the, the history and the tradition yeah. of building your own and the shape and the clean lines, yeah. but that's all kind of taken a back seat to the galley. Like now, you could make me the cleanest line trailer and tell me it came from World War II, but if it doesn't have a galley, and especially as high as your um, trailer is, that uh, the hatch on it, it's perfect over my head. Right. I didn't need any sort of tent. When it was right. raining, like I'm completely protected. Yeah. And May and I spent a ton of time back there this summer, just like right. making a bunch of meals, yeah. hanging out. It's, there's something, I don't know, I don't know, there's something awesome about cooking outside as long as it's not a pain in the butt. Yeah, when it's not and a pain. And right. that's what I like about the galley, right? Exactly. You get that like primitive feel of cooking outside, mm -hmm. but it's convenient. It is. Yeah. It is. And, it, and it's convenient not even just for what it's designed for. So this Cook Partner stove, everybody knows, it's like yeah. the Overland Industries' favorite stove. Right. Uh, one week in, two weeks in, we switched over to the Scottle, almost full time. Really? But it still was right here with this, you know? Yeah. Like, we nice. love the stove. We use this in the morning right. for a coffee. Yeah, you didn't we use that it. scuttle for coffee. No, I know that. No, right? But it, yeah. it, and it integrated really well with this because I still had right. all that counter space. Right. I had my fridge right here. I had the pass through that I could bring all yeah. that food in right. and out. Yeah. Like, this was my best food summer ever. And I think it was for May, too. Like, yeah. she, we were baking things on the scuttle. Nice. Uh, oh, really? Baking. Wow. And it, like, turns out the only thing yeah. we couldn't make on the scuttle 
was eggs. Couldn't figure it out. Right. But other than that, everything. Which is probably the easiest thing to make on a scuttle, but okay. Not for our family. So yeah. A little bacon grease, a little bacon first. Yeah. Render the bacon grease, move it up, mix your eggs up, cook your eggs. And then, said so no matter what heat we'd, we'd do that, no matter what yeah. heat we'd put it at, it would brown. The eggs really? would brown. Oh. We don't know. So we asked wow. people in the video. Okay. Maybe other people can help us, but yeah. um, we, <laughs> you'll see that you don't know about this. We threw a giant um, fat tire bike electric bike inside there nice so you got that oversized door right so it was easy to just move in and out it's one of those right. folding electric yeah. bikes pulled back the bedding super yeah. easy and you had four tie downs in there so we were able to just like tie it down and just rally uh, I wouldn't suggest it to anyone you see it in the end of the right. video I was like so easy putting it in I got done on that yeah. huge ride because you know I'm filming myself so I'm right. going up a mountain running the camera down a mountain driving up the mountain <laughs> running the camera right so I get back and I can't even like get the bike back in the oh, bean. Right, I'm like right. shaking. Yeah. Um, but it's cool to know with this two inch receiver here, I could throw on a rack. Right. With the size of that door, I could throw bikes in there or whatever. Yeah. With the structure of the rack up top, like yeah. this trailer is what I've been telling everybody on YouTube that I've been saying get a trailer that's future proof. Get a trailer right. that grows with you because they all right. keep saying, Drew, your family's going to outgrow a teardrop. You need a bigger trailer. Yeah. When are you going to stop this teardrop thing? It's and I'm not, like, not with that thing. Yeah, we're not, we're not stopping teardrop right. life. Yeah. Like this is what, and I think some people think we're almost like faking it or romanticizing it. Yeah. Rent one of these. Uh, yeah. Rent a trailer, you know, these 1500 pound trailers. Rent ones, you know, it doesn't have to be a bean. Try out anything right. and you'll know that it yeah. might be the experience for I, you. you know? I, I, I think it has everything it needs and nothing it doesn't. And yep, that's, exactly. that's what I love about a teardrop trailer. Can we talk about the stove again? Can we circle back to the oh, stove? Yeah. yeah. Have you, because you've been in a lot of trailers, there's nothing more annoying to me that you're trying to trailer and you're trying to make your coffee in the morning and it takes your water 10 minutes, 12 minutes to boil. Yeah. By that point, I'm just angry. Yeah. Right? And yeah. what I love about this uh, this stove is, man, like, yeah, it your roars. water it is roars. boiling quickly. And In fact, you have to be careful not to burn stuff. Yeah. Right? Because of the setting on it. Yeah. And it has a pretty good simmer control, too, which yeah. we were surprised about. But that's something I probably should have mentioned it, too. Like, what stood out to us about this is all that galley, the prep space. Yeah. Like, I don't know why everybody has to integrate their stove into the prep area. I don't right. need my stove up there. I need yeah. my stove yeah. away, you know. So, nice. yeah. It's been, it was, it was good. Oh, can I tell you about the Iceco fridge? Yes. Okay, this is pretty cool. Yeah. So, you sent me with the Zamp Solar. Is it in the video? Is it cropped out? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So, that, that guy Drew, over there. Drew's favorite um, solar panel. <laughs> Anyway, go ahead. That thing, okay, I'm not a huge fan because it's huge, right? Yeah, that thing is right, massive. Right. But it's, I looked up the version. It's only 70 watts. Uh, I ran this in, this entire trailer for two months with a fantastic fan every night, with the lights, and my refrigerator, a 42-liter refrigerator from Iceco, the whole time, never ran out of power. Off of that? Panel? Off of that wow. little 70-watt nice. panel. One of the things we wanted you to test for us was um, being stocked with a Subaru Outback. We get a ton of inquiries from people about how Bean does with an Outback, and honestly, we didn't know because we didn't have an Outback, so we bought a fleet Outback. It just happens that we got one of the first Subaru Outback Wildernesses, which is kind of a new off-road yeah. model, which they call it an off-road model, but anyway, your thoughts on towing with a Subaru? Yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, I've done a lot of towing with a lot of different vehicles on trailers of this size, so I kind of knew going into this that this it was gonna it was gonna meet the job I knew that right. the bean stock if it was stock completely none of this rooftop tent awning box any Subaru 
would be. I mean, the Subaru Outback of any right. size would be fine. My worry was when I asked you to throw all this on, could it handle it? Yeah. And um, like, it didn't even phase it. Yeah. Uh, it rocked out of the hole. It went up the steepest passes. It rides 80 miles per hour on the highway. I mean, yeah. it's um, there was no limitation. And kind of the neat thing about the Subaru that that version, it was lifted enough that like I never thought twice about where I was going this summer. When you have 15 inches of clearance here and nine yeah. and a half on the Subaru, it's like almost yeah. limitless. Um, but you know, the thing I see online a lot is people worried about the CV transmission. And I've went through so many Subaru forums in the last couple of years. If you talk to Subaru owners, they don't seem to have any issues. Right. But it's everybody outside the Subaru community that seems right. worried because yeah. uh, it's like a newer technology. Um, but I've never been able to come well, to anything. I, I don't think they've had CVT issues for years. So, right? yeah, I mean, and if you go in, yeah. like I said, if you go into the forums, nobody's yeah. having them. You don't right. see Subaru owners. Right. Um, but there's things, you know, when you park it on a hill, there's precautions you should use with a CV transmission, little things like that. But yeah. in that manual, I opened it up. It does not shy you away from towing. The towing capacity, I think, is 3,500 pounds. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. In terms of stopping distance, I don't know what the Outback weighs, but it must weigh quite a bit because it stopped this thing on a dime. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I still like lately I'm becoming more and more of a fan of the brakes. Like if you have the money, I say put electric brakes yeah. on any trailer. Yeah. Regardless of what you're towing it with, it'll right. save your brakes on your car. It's just kind of an easier overall thing, yeah. but this did fine without electric yeah. brakes. So I towed this in this morning. Oh yeah, huh. To, and um, the, the first thing that hit me was just the power relative to the trailer. Like, I, I, I don't yeah. think I felt the trailer behind yeah. me. I could feel it because the Outback has kind of a naturally soft suspension. It, it so I, soft. I could feel a little bouncing, but nothing that was unnerving, nothing that I, I felt like it steered well, it had more than enough power, and I thought the brakes were adequate. Yeah, and that softness that you're talking about, at times it like was kind of boring to me, like it was kind of like a family car, like I wanted yeah. it a little stiffer. But when you were on a trail for like National Forest BLM land, it felt like I was driving on a paved highway because oh, the wow. Subaru is so soft. And right. then even this, this is not independent suspension. This is right. a Dexter torsion axle and right. it's soft. Uh, yeah. And so you're going down the road and it's just like, this is, uh, by far one of the most, this paired with the Outback is, besides a Tacoma that I've paired with Timber and Independent Suspension, right. this is the softest ride I've had. Really? Uh, and that nice. was kind of neat, like okay. for a family, like nobody's getting shook around, you know. Okay, so thumbs up to a Subaru with the Outback with a teardrop trailer. Yeah, yeah, I think right. for anybody the only issue is I just always watch that tongue weight. You know, yeah. make sure whatever your Outback is, you're not exceeding that tongue yeah. weight. Um, but, you know, okay. as is stock, I don't think it's gonna get even close to that tongue weight, so. Yeah. The other thing I, I wanted to comment on is uh, in a recent video that Nick is right now playing here or here or wherever. Yeah, right, yeah, we'll say it's right there. Um, you you showed that how you exercised, right? <laughs> um, it, that you you know you maintained your routine exercising, mm -hmm. and you had um, devices to do that. Yeah. And so we thought it was only fitting for us to send you off to Thailand with, with some additional. <laughs> you are ridiculous. <laughs> So we thought it would be good to send you up with some additional um, exercise oh, you're so paraphernalia. Funny. So, um, you're so I got, we got a couple things for you. We got uh, we, we got the thigh mask. Oh, wait. <laughs> I've always wanted one of these. <laughs> we, we, we have the thigh master for you. 
so <laughs> so you'll you'll be able to <laughs> this is so bean this is why i said i'm not into beans marketing <laughs> yeah oh <laughs> yes so you and suzanne summers will have the Titus inter, inter thighs, you know. Where did you so find you this in 2021 is the question. People you know, are still. <laughs> and. Is this one of those we shake got to the shake weight. <laughs> so. I'm going to keep it very far away from my midsection. Yeah. So. This so actually, anyway. This is actually a pretty good present. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, did I'm, you catch I, me this morning? I was doing it. I was working out when I was. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I have yeah, to. Yeah, I know, man. Uh, yeah, what, we what saw what you see. I almost yeah knocked my what, shoulder. What people out will see interview. in the outtakes is how you almost lost your shoulder. Exactly. Uh, uh, so anyway, um, I on a more sincere note, I I I can't think of a better person on this planet that I would have uh, liked to have had taken Bean out uh, as much as I liked to. Taking Beanstalk out, testing the box, and just taking the Subaru, and just uh, I'm glad that uh, we're able to share that experience with you. And uh, not just as, as a YouTuber, but I, I've loved the amazing conversations that we ha have had that have had nothing to do with trailers. <laughs> true, so, very true. Anyway, I wish you tons of luck in Thailand. Um, I hope you have a great experience and maybe we'll see you next summer that sounds I, that could be possible all right so um that that wraps it up for being trailer uh drew's channel is playing with sticks and uh make sure you go over there and remember to i never get this right so you say this part i don't do it either like subscribe oh, yeah. i don't like doing that we're, we're I not tell gonna people, do check it. out my playlist. like it if you want check to subscribe if you want to but if not <laughs> don't thanks good when are you gonna build my leans <laughs> <laughs> Cut. <laughs> How much is the algorithm on YouTube going to hate this video? <laughs> I don't want to offend Bean or you. Okay, well, if you do, we'll, we'll just cut it out. All right, that sounds good. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll take. take. Doing. Yeah, shoulders. I've been talking about it in the channel lately. It'll um, go viral, right? Drew's screaming in pain His shoulder at the trailer. Video goes viral. Cut the black screen. Oh, man. <laughs> 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 I, do, I do not know what to do right now.